So, did Blizzard fix Diablo 4? Well, the answer is sort of. It depends if you think Diablo 4 was broken in the first place, or whether you were one of those people that hated the fundamentals of the game so much that no change could ever impress you. A better way to phrase the question probably is, is Diablo 4 more fun now for you or me? And the answer to that is also sort of. So first, I'm gonna break down the changes and say what they mean for your average player like me, someone who does not play the game hardcore at all by any means, just your average old man dad gamer. So let's go through the changes. Base item updates. The amount of loot dropping will be reduced, but overall loot quality will be higher. The goal is for players to use crafting to customize their gear further. Smaller affix pools. Many unused affixes have been removed from the game, finally. More relevant and potential affixes, such as core skill ranks and existing affix values will be adjusted so that they can be felt. Basically, they're making loot useful. Legendary or unique items will now be tradable, which is super cool if you play with friends. Modifying an item, for example, through enchanting will make it account bound and thus no longer tradable. Only sacred items will drop in World Tier 3. Only ancestral items will drop in World Tier 4. Legendary items will now have three affixes down from four. Rare items will now have two affixes down from four. Basically, just getting rid of the amount of clutter on your screen while sifting through items in Diablo. This is by far the biggest improvement for me. Diablo 4's core loot system on launch was not fun, at least for me, and caused me to get burned out really quickly. Nothing is less fun than playing an ARPG and being constantly disappointed with the loot. While I'm not some Diablo 4 expert or big maths guy, I can tell you that from the perspective of your average player, you're going to be getting more of those sweet, sweet dopamine hits. And let's be honest, for your average RPG player, that's what matters. And I think Blizzard have achieved that successfully. Next up, we have itemization updates. Legendary items dropped from monsters level 95 plus will always have 925 item power. Gems have been simplified and made stronger. Gold cost to reroll items at the occultist now have a cap. Some crafting materials have been removed and consolidated. Many unique items can now drop in World Tier 1 and 2. All unique items can now drop in World Tier 3. Uber unique items start dropping from monsters level 55. These changes really, in my opinion, mostly speak for themselves. What they're trying to do is they're trying to smooth out the gear curve so that players have a better experience. And finally, gems kind of matter, which is nice because I like gems, uh, I guess. And here we get to the new stuff that I feel has kind of brought Diablo 4 more up to par with a game like Last Epoch. So we have a new crafting system called Tempering. Tempering is a new crafting system that will allow players to add new affixes to their gear. Tempering manuals will add one of their four affixes to an item at random. These drop from most of the content in the game. Ancestral items can have up to two temperate affixes from different categories applied to them. Items will have a limited tempering durability that will determine how many times a temperer can be re-rolled. Essentially, tempering just gives you more control over your items in a way that's shockingly similar to games like Last Epoch and a little bit like a simplified version of Path of Exile, which is also, I think, what Last Epoch's systems were aiming for. Albeit, the system is even simpler than Last Epoch's. All you really do is get a bunch of recipes and then spend uh, resources to reroll affixes uh, on items. It's very helpful. It's something the game really should have had at launch, and I guess it's good that it has it now. New crafting system, Masterworking. Masterworking is a new late game item upgrading system that will include 12 ranks. Masterworking improves the values of your current affixes. Most ranks slightly increase the value of all affixes. Every four ranks, a single affix is significantly upgraded. So what Diablo 4 really needed was a system more similar to Diablo 3's for its seasons. At least that's what I've always thought. So here we have it, Masterworking. At World Tier 4, you'll be able to access something called The Pit that will function like Greater Rifts in Diablo 3. For those of you who don't play or didn't play Diablo 3, Greater Rifts were timed dungeons where beating them quicker got you better rewards and you could easily ramp up the difficulty. Completing these would drop materials that would allow you to upgrade various gems that would increase your overall stats. In this case, completing these drops gives you materials for further upgrading your ancestral legendaries. I like this system, but it's also kind of old hat to me. I've played Diablo 3 a lot in my day, and this is the same thing, only with affixes on gear rather than on gems that I put into my gear. It's good, but it is sort of feels like the devs are running out of ideas for content. 
if you've got to recycle Diablo 3 to make Diablo 4 better. It doesn't feel like Diablo 4 is so much standing on the shoulders of giants, so much as using those shoulders as a crutch. But that's enough about the changes. How does Diablo 4 in Season 4 feel for a normal casual player like you or me? Well, here's how it's going to go. You're going to do Helltides. A lot of Helltides. For those that haven't played since launch, Helltides involve running around in high monster density areas and slaying demons to both gain reputation and currency. The currency allows you to unlock chests that drop items, loads of XP, and baneful hearts. Upon farming three baneful hearts, you can go to the altar and summon a blood maiden, who will also drop a lot of loot and experience and reputation. The only thing that will ever draw you out of Helltides are capstone dungeons to unlock world tier 3 and 4. Eventually, you'll progress into Nightmare Dungeons, where you'll eventually unlock the Pit, aka the Greater Rifts, that you'll continue to farm. This is not Path of Exile's endgame, and I would say it's even still far simpler than Last Epochs. My own opinion is mixed. I feel like Diablo 4's developers have realized what this game is. It's a dad game for dads to chill after they come home from work. I would say at this point, it's still probably the most casual ARPG on the market of the current generation, despite the huge difficulty spikes in the end game. The leveling is much faster now, on par with Diablo 3, so that's an improvement. But if you're completely... The leveling is much faster now, on par with Diablo 3's seasons, so that's an improvement. But if I'm completely honest, the game is giving me nostalgic feelings for Diablo 3, which is something I never thought I'd say. Everything about Diablo 4 initially presented itself on launch as this serious, grim, almost MMORPG-like experience without the cartoonish action frills of Diablo 3. But at the end of it all, and I know this will offend some people, something about the game just feels very mobile game-esque to me at this point. The combat isn't complicated enough for me to care about that. The character builds certainly aren't. The itemization is now better. I really struggled to hit level 50 to make this video because in large part the whole experience just felt a bit like a waste of my time. Let's be honest, ARPGs are about click, 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 get loot, number go up. But what separates a good ARPG is how much they can engage the player either in those systems, in a game like Path of Exile, or distract them with an interesting world and story like in a game like Grim Dawn or Titan Quest. In the end, I just don't know if Diablo 4 knows what it wants to be. It's shifting toward an ultra-casual, almost mobile game experience, and that is probably the direction it's going to continue going in. So in many respects, I think that is an improvement. At least the devs now have listened to player feedback and better gauge who their audience is and shape the game around it. I just don't think it's for me. In fact, I'm not sure there's much of a future for any ARPG out there, maybe other than Path of Exile 2, but that's probably a rant for another time. Peace.